Hi there, this is Tom with Escape Artist, and I have the pleasure today to interview Mahira Amir Khan. Uh, Mahira is uh, just an incredible lady. She's uh, approached us in working with Escape Artist to put out a very, very exciting easing for the new year in 2012 called Escape Journey. How are you doing today, Mahira? I'm doing excellent, Tom. It's so good to see you. You too. You look lovely. Thank you. So you're uh, you're coming from California, I guess. Is it San Diego or L.A.? The L.A. area, correct? Yes, Los Angeles. Right now I'm in Malibu, but yes, I'm in Los Angeles, California. Malibu is a lovely place to be at this time of year, isn't it? It is That's so gorgeous. I wish you could see the ocean views from here and sleeping with the sounds of the waves crashing is incredible. That's I love it. That's dynamite. Excellent. So, uh, Mahira, I, I'd uh, you know I'd like to let the the readers know a little bit about you uh, to you know kind of your upbringing to what's brought you to L.A. and maybe just a little bit of your experience and what you have going on in your life right now. Could you give us a little insight into who you are and what you're up to? Oh gosh, there's so much to share. Um, I'm originally from Singapore, and um, Singapore, as you know, is a little island in Southeast Asia. And I was born and raised there, and I studied in Australia. And when I returned to Southeast Asia from Australia, I was a writer, and I was a chief editor for a health magazine. And um, I've always been someone who is extremely curious and very much into exploring my spirituality as well as exploring planets. So. When I came back from Australia, I naturally just wanted to see the world and um, also further myself and evolve myself as much as possible in the meantime. So I traveled to India, I traveled to um, uh, to Europe, I traveled to I traveled across Southeast Asia, and I also made it a point to visit. Um, siddhas and gurus and engage in spiritual practices and rites of passage because I wanted to grow and I wanted to learn more and I wanted to just be my ultimate self and I wanted to learn from the best that I the best I could find so I've always been an explorer and um, when I came across your magazine, it was such uh, so perfectly, such a perfect fit for me because um, uh, that's what I believe in. I believe that's how we should live. We should travel the planet. We should connect with the various cultures and people out there. And we need to make the most of this life because there's so many gifts to be received. And to me, travel and spirituality, it's not uh, an addition to our life, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And it's, all, it's been the way I've always lived my life. And for my family, it was a little bit to take on <laughs> because I returned from Australia and I was ready to see, you know, adventure. And I was, I'm a girl, you know, to go on my own to, let's say, to Thailand or Korea and maybe climb a mountain if I felt like it. And that was a lot for them to take. That why why is my child like this? <laughs> what do I do with a with a child who's got this zest for ex exploration? Um, but nothing has really held me back. I've always followed my instincts and and gone with it, and it's proved to to have uh, um, given me a very very colorful and fruitful life. Um, not only in my connections with people, but also in terms of my career. Right. I understand so, you have a, you have another part of your career. You were involved in motorsports. I understand. Yes, I was in the world of dirt bikes. Me, I don't look like I belong, <laughs> <laughs> and I really I don't. But um, I have to say, I really enjoyed the industry because I first came to Los Angeles strictly to get into film and television. And when I came here, there were so many opportunities and people, and uh, I didn't feel comfortable with anyone because, uh, there, you know, there are a lot of... It's a cutthroat place, characters. right? Yeah. It is. It is. And when I came across the director of our movies, 
Troitomitis, um, I instantly felt comfortable with him. And for that reason alone, I decided this is the person I'm going to work with because I trusted him. I didn't know, I did not know what motocross was. I didn't know anything about dirt bikes, but I felt that this is someone I can trust who's gifted, who's the best at what he does, and in the field, he's the very best. So I decided I'm going to go into extreme sports. And for six years, I was producing the great outdoors, and we've produced, like, uh, I would say about 17 award winning or nominated movies. And in the, in the field, we're known as the ultimate filmmakers in motocross. And we also produced a TV show called Behind the Moto, Inside the Outdoors, and that airs on Field TV. That's great. Now, I remember the first motocross event I went to, I just felt like all you do is you go like this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the indoor arenas. I, I, you know, I think my neck was sore by the end of the event just from looking up and down how high those guys jump up in the air. It's just absolutely amazing. So, well, that's great. So, is, you're, go ahead. It's fun. It, it's thrilling. And what I liked about and I really appreciate about my experience is that we worked with the world's top writers. Mm-hmm. So, we were intimately involved and engaged with athletes who were at the height of their sport and um, the way they lived their lives, the way they conducted themselves, the way they integrated their family lives with their career, that was profound for me. They are rare beings and I learned so much just by their presence alone and I was more interested in them as human beings rather than the sport itself. And um, it was last year that I decided I made a commitment to be completely aligned in my own life. And for me, it meant actually leaving motocross, leaving extreme sports, and producing, stepping into producing media that was um, empowering and inspirational and involved an element of spirituality as well as travel. Because I've always been an adventurer. So I guess you sold your your uh, dirt bike, huh? Yes, I've, I've actually <laughs> not. I don't. I think I've only been on a dirt bike once or twice. That's funny. But yeah, I, you can I say was, that. I, I was interviewing Jay Scott the other day, and he has sold golf course uh, lots for almost thirty years, and he says he doesn't play golf, which I thought was really funny, and so I was assuming that maybe you weren't a big dirt bike rider, but uh, certainly having an interest in people is great, so that's super, so we're, we're talking about uh, the next leg in your journey, and I, I always ask, before we, we move to that, I always ask people for a, a golden nugget of wisdom for people that maybe want to get into the the broadcasting business or the interview business uh, in whether it's motorsports or breaking into what the field that you broke into, what would be the greatest golden nugget you could give to somebody who's watching? The greatest golden nugget? Um, Really, I would say precision and clarity, knowing exactly what it is that your gifts are and what you're designed to do. And then once you determine that, launching into it full on because it's going to take a lot of strength and determination and perseverance. It may not come easy. Maybe it will, but I would say the clarity and precision, knowing exactly what it is you want to do is extremely beneficial because the right people and circumstances will be brought to you. And um, uh, it's very important. I feel for myself to be able to retreat to nature and to create a sanctuary. So even in um, a very, in the space of a very busy, hectic life, for example, production is crazy. Um, I found that I've needed to nourish myself and really extract myself from society, from my, my, my everyday life and kind of rest in the bosom of nature. If you want to, if you want to say that and I feel that these moments that we take to shut down and to reset, it propels us forward. So that, for me, has been fundamental, taking time out, being in nature. 
I have a question on your uh, uh, interviewing skills. Did you did you continue to take classes even even after you became accomplished at what you did? It is did you continue to take classes or or uh, continue your education in your field while you were still doing it? You know, we were so busy when we were when I was in motocross. We were so busy. We had in six years, I produced seventeen movies and TV specials and. Um, the TV show came on after that, the reality series came on, and it was just one project after another. I did not, I didn't have time to go to school to learn anything. It was, so, it was hands on. You got on. It was all hands on. I asked Ted McGrath the same question in an interview I've done recently. Did you have any mentors in your field? Uh, was, did mentors play an important part in helping you, uh, get where you were? Um, Prior to film and TV, I was a writer, a journalist, and editor of a magazine. Um, I've always sought to have people in my life whom I admire and respect and who live their lives in a way that um, gains my admiration. Um, I didn't exactly have a mentor in journalism or in film and TV, but I've had people around me who have been successes at what they do. So that's how it played out for me. That's great. That's so, great. Happy. Mm-hmm. so in talking about your, your next uh, leg on the journey, you know, we talk about life being almost like a canvas and uh, your vision and the dreams that you have is kind of the paintbrush and the paint. Uh, what are you painting now? What's, uh, what's the image you're going to paint for everybody now? I am painting a masterpiece. <laughs> I'm painting the most beautiful picture you could even imagine. Tom, I wish you could see it right now. <laughs> but <laughs> it's beautiful. I've seen it in my mind's eye, and it's gorgeous. Um, What's it going to do? How would What's, I describe it? How's it going to inspire people? What's it going to do for people? How's it going to change culture? Well, that's what I'm here to do. I knew from the time I was maybe five or six years old, I knew I had to do something that would impact humanity, that would help shift the world and and, and create really powerful transformation, which is why I chose film and TV, because of the ability to influence the masses. And for me right now, um, there are two, actually three things that really excite me. Firstly, is the collaboration with Escape Artists, producing the magazine, Escape Journeys, where we bring in and uh, collect stories of spiritual experiences from readers around the world and get to really share and engage in these stories. On top of that, we're going to have the web series and we'll be interviewing profound characters who have stories to share about their own spiritual journeys. To me, that's really exciting because I feel that at this time right now, we're at the end of 2011, embarking on 2012. This is really a really poignant time. It's rich with opportunity. It's like a window of divinity has almost opened up and in a sphere, in a plane where many people have felt that we've been almost, the game has been rigged to fail. I would say at this time, I feel like a pathway has opened up where a certain amount of courage and bravery is needed to really go for exactly what we want because everything will support us. And these moments in in our history don't come often. And it's happening. It's presenting itself for us right now. So it's very important to hear stories from people who have actually followed their instincts and listened and followed their guidance and taken that leap of faith and taken, for example, spiritual journeys. To hear that your average Joe, your neighbor or your friend who you would have never expected has done something that has required such um, such courage about them and the gifts that happen as a result of it, it's really powerful to share that, which is why storytelling I feel has been such a um, intrinsic um, part of indigenous cultures 
in, that in a way has been lost for, um, for commercialism. But I want to bring back the nature of storytelling. I want to bring back the ability to share a heartfelt journey that would really inspire action and, 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 and create change, which is why I decided to get involved in this magazine. So Escape Journeys is one thing I'm very excited about, and there's more. So tell me about, uh, I, I, we'll be putting out an issue every 60 days or maybe even one every month once we start getting a lot more people contributing articles. Um, is there any plans to, you know, go with media on this and, and do any type of uh, episodes or webisodes where you'll take journeys with people or, or interview people? Do you have ideas uh, in that realm? Yes, I have a lot of ideas. I really want to bring in... Firstly, as we've spoken about, we're going to be doing the interviews. I'll be interviewing um, public personalities, speakers, writers, authors, um, anyone who has a story to tell, who has inspiration to give. I want to meet. I want to meet you. I want to connect with you. I want to hear your story. I want to hear your journey. Because it's the journey. It's not just the destination. It's not just, oh, look what I have now. It's the process that's, it's, 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 it just, it's, it's full of life and fire and it translates and it just, it's like one flame lighting another flame. Hmm, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. One story That's to the next, it's like, I think they said it's like one candle lighting the next candle. It, stories definitely do that. And we've seen some magnificent stories from the alchemist to the monk who sold his Ferrari to the uh, Bhagavad mm -hmm. Gita, a, a most beautiful story, um, beautiful poem. Uh, what are some of, some, some of the books that have inspired you or authors that have inspired you in your uh, campaign to gaining self-awareness? I've read so many books. Um, gosh. Um, the Alchemist is definitely a favorite of mine. In fact, at one stage, I think it was one year when, just before I decided to leave Singapore and take a big adventure and get into film and TV here in L.A., where I knew nobody, I would start up completely on my own and give up a good position as a chief editor in Singapore, you know, and leave my family. Just the year before I took that leap, I started getting the alchemist as a gift from every <laughs> every second person. It's like, oh, I have a gift. I have a going away gift for you. Oh, it's the alchemist. <laughs> I read that book so many times. I loved it because, um, oh, gosh. It's about a journey. It's, yeah, it's about a journey, and you have to take the journey. Even if it's inconvenient to organize it, or if you arrive and it's uncomfortable, like when I went to India, I was like, oh my god, I'm not stepping into a bathroom <laughs> when I first went, you know. Um, I fell in love with India afterwards. But there's a lot you come across when you journey. There's the good and the bad, but the journey is important to, to feel that call to move and to follow it. And um, the result of that is, is it can go in so many directions. Who knows who you'll meet, what you'll see, what sights you'll see, what nature will present to you that will color you for the rest of your life. I, I, I personally believe that beauty, physical beauty, especially in nature, has the ability to reprogram the cells and to reprogram our DNA. So it's a must. You must seek beauty That's because good. your body requires it. I tell a lot of people I was fortunate enough to have a guy who actually told me what the undertones of the alchemist was and to, to really point out what the different symbolism in the book was. And, you know, one thing that Santiago, I know in the book, he has a hard time giving up his sheep. And you realize that the sheep end up being your ideas, your family, your career, the things that you really do need to give up to, to, to be one with God or to be one with your soul. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's so funny to go back and read the book after you really understand the symbolism in that book and go, yeah, I've definitely had a hard time giving up my sheep in life and, uh, it's caused me all kinds of problems. So, uh, that's, that's great. So Alchemist is one. 
Do you have any movies uh, recently? I know there's been some, uh, was it Eat, Pray, Sleep? Or was it Eat, Pray, Love uh, wow. came out? Yeah. Yeah, I like that movie too. I watch a lot of movies actually. I appreciate when a movie is done right and art is represented in any form. Gosh, I'm trying to think. Alice in Wonderland is actually, to go back to books, Alice in Wonderland is one of my favorite books. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because um, Lewis Carroll is someone who thinks very differently from from the norm. And his ability to travel into fantasy and to relish in the imagination is a quality that I appreciate. And I've always wanted to do things my own way. Why not? Why would I want to do it any other way that's presented to me when I am called to do things a certain way that I feel comfortable with? So when I see a writer, an artist, a filmmaker who creates their own genre or uh, creates an altogether new world or uses their own style and, and, and fully dives into it. Even Dr. Seuss, uh, books like that, you know, it's just, there's no rules. You, you have your own rules. I love that. So for me, art is not purely, um, what is aesthetically pleasing to the public, to the public at large. It's, it occurs when you really delve into your own unique genius. Vincent van Gogh is one of my favorite artists. And I read his book, Lust for Life, so many times when I was a kid. I just was so drawn to him because here was a man who was so obsessed and dedicated to his art that he would go out into the fields during the times of the year when the sun was so pronounced and the heat was so uh, so so strong and powerful that it would create like a feverish spell and these were the times of the year where you actually stay indoors but he would go out because he wanted to provoke uh, a form of madness slash genius that actually created helped create his art. Mm. And when I read Lust for Life, which happens to be my mom's favorite book too, I was captivated because uh, there's something magical that happens when you are just absolutely obsessed with what you do. I think, uh, Walt, I think, I think Walt Disney fell into that category as well. Yeah, he yeah. was he was one too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. look what he created. He yeah. created. I, I I read a book of his. I'll have to give you the title of it, but it was staggering. The by 1964, the number of people that had touched Walt Disney, and he talked about creating a paracosm where you actually create your own universe where people can do anything they want in that universe. And uh, what an awesome idea as a human being to be able to have that power. Uh, to, to have the power of creation like that. And I'll have to give you, he talked about the Disneyfication of the world. And, uh, he definitely, definitely something that you're, you're talking about right now. So, uh, Mahira, tell me, um, you know, I know that people struggle in life and a lot of the times when they hit bottom, they have a, just a absolutely monumental period of time in their life to just, that signify, signifies a change, and I know I personally had one, and people will read it in my article um, that I have coming out in your spiritual in the escape journey easing. But what has been that moment for you? It, was it just an easy transition for you, or did you fight and struggle and go through just massive uh, turmoil before you hit that? Uh, you know, yeah, a plane. They say when a plane breaks the speed of sound, everything it like shakes violently, and then boom, when it hits that speed of sound, it just it's crystal clear. You seem very crystal clear right now. Was there a moment of time where you went through that sound barrier? Yeah, I did. Um, I was very blessed when I was young to have a family, to have a father who really worked so hard to provide for us. I'm always extremely grateful for that. And a mother who provided unconditional love and still does to this day. So I'm very blessed with my parents. I've always been, at a very young age, 
I would say I've always been in touch with God. And even at the age of six or seven years old, I would talk to God and I would give my mom messages from God. And I would have dreams, really colorful dreams of Jesus walking down the street with a splash of color around him. And I'm, I wasn't born in a Muslim family, but I had dreams of Jesus walking down our neighborhood street. And I was always captivated by um, what was beyond this physical universe. And a turning point actually happened to me when I was very young. I was going to, I was, my, my chauffeur picked me up from school and he dropped me at my father's sh- shop in Singapore, in, in the shopping mall called Lucky Plaza. And he waited for me behind the building. And I ran to see my dad and after I was done visiting my father, I left the, the shopping center and without even looking, I ran across the street to get to my car. And I didn't realize it, but a car came for me and would have knocked me off and hit me, would have knocked me off my feet. But something actually pulled me, pulled my hand, and just ripped me out of the way. Wow. And um, there were witnesses, there were people who were standing by, and my my chauffeur drew, comes running down the hill because he sees what's going on with me, and I'm just shaken, taken aback. Like, oh, first of all, a car just just drives by me and just a flurry and and something just had pulled my arm away and I just stood there in shock and the immediate thought was an angel saved me it was an angel that grabbed my arm I immediately knew that Hmm. there was no question and everybody starts running to me asking me how did you do that (laughs) And I couldn't talk. I couldn't speak. I just went back to my car and I went home. Mm -hmm. And for two weeks, I was so quiet. And I would would have this internal conversation with myself. Angels exist. It's They are real. Angels exist. And um, I started becoming very curious after that. Because it wasn't... It wasn't just a feeling or a vision or a sign. I literally felt someone yank my arm. It was solid. It was a solid feeling, you know? So from that age, I started becoming extremely curious. And I would order these books from from England, like the best books on angelic healing. And I just became very curious. And throughout my childhood... I would say even though I'm very thankful for my parents, it wasn't exactly an easy childhood. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't want to go too much into that, but let's say my parents are divorced. (laughs) I don't know, not at this time, but my parents are divorced and um, it was a very rocky, rocky uh, marriage and the two wonderful people, but just the intensity of that childhood and the chaos and the, um, everything that occurred between them and the extent of my, uh, of my family life. And, you know, there are some very interesting people in my family. When my dad married my mother, he was, he was doing well, but he started to become very, very successful. And, um, there's a lot that comes with success that people who are uh, who, who resented it who didn't feel comfortable with it and there was a lot to take in and then when they got divorced all that changed you know so I've seen I've gone through the process seeing oh unlimited unlimited having it all and then losing a lot losing it all like before my eyes at a very young age, seeing that, you know, I would, I would say just before, in my early 20s, seeing the, the absolute gain and the loss and then being okay with it. Right. And, yeah, so I've seen, I, I've had an interesting childhood. I would say the turning point for me really happened last year was when things really changed. 
I was in motocross. I was a producer, and I started to I started to feel like something was missing. I wanted more, and I wasn't fulfilled, and I wasn't thoroughly engaged by what I was doing. And then when that happens, I can't allow that to continue. I have to discover what's going on. So I started delving into plant medicine, and um, I went. I did many ayahuasca ceremonies. And I actually traveled to the Amazon, traveled to the Andes, did ceremonies there. Very eventful. Gosh, it's hard for me to actually share such private, uh, such a private part of my life so publicly, but I'll try my level best to <laughs> do so. Um, when I started doing ayahuasca ceremonies, that's when I was shown that I actually held a lot of fear and I saw myself previously saw myself as a fearless person no I wasn't not at all I had not I didn't know that I had lived a protected life and I was shown that you have not experienced anything (laughs) you know you know nothing you think you're fearless you know nothing you've seen nothing what you think is immense is nothing compared to what others have experienced and when I started going through ceremony I wanted to learn more and I wanted to be pushed and propelled and uh, ayahuasca is from the from the plant the, the ayahuasca plant and she is a feminine spirit she's the greatest teacher of the plant teachers and she came to me very very deeply and I was just uh, I was just so dedicated to this path when I started on it last year and it's a little controversial to many people some people didn't like the fact that I was delving into a journey that was so intense and that was changing me at such a quick pace I had friends who didn't like it they didn't like that I was becoming clearer they didn't like that I was making changes in my life I was becoming more outspoken in many ways but I knew I had to carry on and I had to really fully engage in this path. And it opened something up in me. It reactivated my pineal gland. It brought me back to the period of time when I was a child and I was able to talk to God and I was able to give my mom messages and I have such beautiful visions and... (laughs) You know, like it was so magical. Yeah, it brought me back to that. And yeah, it's just life has been so completely different. I, I've experienced more since then, good and bad. It was almost like, okay, you think you're ready? I'm going to give, we're going to give you everything to really shape you up and align your life completely. So a lot has happened. Maybe I'll save the details for another day. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, you know, in listening to your story, uh, I can tell you I quit drinking about eight years ago just because of the havoc that it caused in my life. And uh, almost identical to what you explained, uh, some of your friends don't want to be associated with you anymore because you don't drink. Uh, you get addicted to clarity. Uh, both Ted McGrath and I have talked about drinking, and I think he's uh, he, he hasn't had a drink in a long time either, but it's just... When you start extracting the, I guess, the poisons from your life and the turmoil from your life, the clarity that you can actually achieve is limitless. And it's addictive, too. It's really fantastic to wake up every day and be absolutely clear. I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I would rather be alone or have just a few friends close to me who are on the same level and the same who have the same mindset that I do at one stage I used to be a very social person I have a lot of friends I still do have a lot of friends you know I have a lot of acquaintances but there's only a few I allow really close into my life mainly because I feel right now at this juncture I have so much to do and so much to give I have a huge responsibility once a human being, any human being gains that clarity and is able to see, okay, these are my gifts and this is what I have to do. 
that's when your responsibility comes in. You have to do it. If you're not doing it, then you know you have the clarity to see exactly what it is. And we have free will. And for myself, I've chosen to completely commit to God and to commit to my path. And by doing so, I've had more fun than I've ever had before. <laughs> it sounds boring to say, oh, I could committed my life to God. Oh, that's, you know, like, who would want to do that, right? I'll take Vegas and Miami and everything else. Yeah. But once I made that statement, I've had the most beautiful people in my life. I have a wonderful partner. I, I have challenges. I definitely have challenges. But they, I'm excited and um, somehow something always steps in to, to land this, uh, to deliver this hand of grace that just creates magical connections. For example, just connecting with you and the, how this magazine came about. It was, in a way, pretty effortless. Yes, it was. You know? It was, so, it was great. A lot of great stories. Uh, that kind of leads me to a, a final point with you. Uh, can you pull out your paintbrush and give people a little taste to make them thirsty for what we've got coming out here in the next uh, the next week? Uh, give some ideas of who the authors are and any insight. Okay. okay. Well, for this first edition, I contacted my friends. So my friends Penny Din. Vina Von Bliss, as she's known. I have Muse Amun. We have Adrian Smith from the Karma Experiment. We have who else do we have? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you a clue. I, I actually set up a domain for you. EscapeJourney.net goes to the actual article, the first article we put out. So if you're watching this interview right now, you can go to EscapeArtist.net. I'm sorry, um, EscapeJourney.net and find out a little bit about the easing, the article that we put out recently. And uh, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, we've got Joe Comer on there. Uh, certainly my articles there and um, we have Jessica interviewed Savano. Jessica Savano yeah so those will be fun articles and Kylie DeMolt from I think Australia mm -hmm. contributed an article so yes so I guess the, well, uh, the, 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 the call that we're asking for people is not only to enjoy the articles uh, not every journey is going to connect with every person but to to read them and if they have a journey they want to share please uh Come forward, and, and I think you have, is it uh, editor at Escape Journey, or is it Mahira at EscapeJourney.com? Mahira at EscapeJourney.com. That's correct. Yes. I'm going to give you that vision, that little splash of inspiration, because I want people to see why this is so exciting to me. Okay. And to us, both of us. Okay, we're bringing in stories of people around us. We've met some we've met through Facebook, some we know in real life, who have gone on journeys that have touched them and have changed their lives and I've seen parts aspects to my friends I didn't even know existed in them. And I had no idea that I would sit and read their stories and just drop and think Wow, you are such an amazing being. I had no idea that it would do that to me. I just thought, okay, we're going to have this wonderful magazine and bring these great stories to inspire people. And I had no idea that I would sit back in awe of many of the stories that came to me. So I think we have a collection of beautiful stories. There's also Christopher Stacer yes. and Eva Clay. Yes. who shares a wonderful story as well. And I believe what is really significant about a magazine is that we are selecting stories that are very intimate and touching. And you don't have to climb Mount Everest or uh, cross the Southern Seas. You don't have to do the most amazing thing. But what have you done that has... Has, has opened your heart wide open. You know, it's 
For example, I give you Jessica Savannah's story. Jessica has an amazing story. She came from Chicago to Los Angeles, and not only was it a physical journey where she decided to um, give herself uh, a life where she would have warmer weather and uh, the ability to engage in different events and lifestyles, you know, she also at the same time went through a change in her body. She's a transgender, and she's now a beautiful woman. And she started off male in Chicago, and she's now in Los Angeles, surrounded by beautiful people. And physically, her physical body represents her soul. She's a gorgeous person, and I love her. And her story is a little bit controversial to some people, but. I thoroughly support her because she followed what was important to her, and she gave herself what she needed, what she felt would fulfill her, fulfill her. And in the process of fulfilling herself, she is such a bright spark and such a pleasure to have in my life and to all her friends. So we're bringing in stories like Jessica's and beautiful stories. On top of that, we're going to have、um, interviews that I feel will be very not only entertaining but colorful and warm and engaging. And I meet so many wonderful people. I want to show the world.、Uh, I travel. I, I you know I, I'm social in public. I talk to strangers, and things happen in this planet. And you when you just Walk out, walk out of your door with an open, wide open heart. Something amazing is going to happen to you. And with the web series, maybe I won't even interview the most famous person out there. But if I come across someone who has moved me, I would love to have、um, sit down and have a conversation with you and hear what you have to say. And I feel that with our magazine, we're going to just be presenting. Such deliciousness, and I'm really excited. <laughs> I am too. Well, I tell you what, Mayor, I, I think we've we've whetted everybody's appetite enough, and、uh, I think that、uh, when this easing comes out, I, the, re- the response will be great. And I I've seen some of the initial work, and I can tell you that you've just、uh, you put together an amazing amazing easing and. You know, when we talk about journeys,、uh, we talk about crossing the proverbial bridge, and we use a lot of people's Uh, vis- you know, experiences, and I, you know, I don't think anything beats a direct experience. But these stories give you courage, and I commend all of the people who contributed to the to the article.、Um, certainly, my story was not easy to tell、um, because of, I've never really told it,、uh, and the, the stories definitely require a ton of courage. And I hope that the readers really respect. The, what, what the contributors and the authors brought to light in this easing, and again, I commend you, and I really thank you. You're a beautiful person, and、uh, we look to have more interviews and a lot more fun like this. Okay? Thank you so much, Tom, and I want to really thank you for collaborating with me and offering, providing this opportunity. I'm very grateful to you, and I am honored to be your friend.、Yes. Thank you. Me too, and、uh, I will tell everybody.、Uh, EscapeJourney.com will be the official website of the easing itself, and then we have EscapeJourney.net goes to a preview article、uh, where we'll be able to、uh, find out a little bit more about it. And I'm sure we'll pull up a few more domains here in the future for additional resources. I think we have EscapeJourney.org also goes. You have a Community that you're building over an escape dates where people can actually see your profile and join your global social network if they're interested in being a part of that. Where they can also do blogs as well, and、uh, we'll we'll talk about that more in a, in a future interview. But、uh, I really appreciate your time, and you have a lovely time in Malibu. It just looks gorgeous behind you. <laughs> Thank you. I will. Thank you so much, Tom. Enjoy Atlanta. I will, and have a happy New Year. Happy New Year! Happy 2012.